got a big night of Big Ten women's soccer coming to you. And we start in Ann Arbor, Michigan, as the Michigan Wolverines, one and one in conference play, welcome the number 17 team in the country, the Wisconsin Badgers, the first of two Big Ten women's soccer games right here on the Big Ten Network. And hello, everybody. I'm Dean Linky. Delighted to be with Glenn Crooks, former Rutgers women's soccer coach. And Glenn, early on in conference play, both these teams coming off exciting victories. Well, Michigan in the conference opener, uh, they were up 2-0 with under five minutes to play against Indiana, end up losing in overtime 3-2. So they really needed that win, and it was a good bounce back against Purdue. As for Wisconsin, they tie their opener at home, and then a thrilling overtime victory defeating Purdue. Yeah, they get that thriller from a player that was on the Mac Herman preseason watch list and the Badgers needed it. Well, uh, Danny Rhodes injured in preseason, didn't start the first two games of the season and didn't score her first goal until the tying goal against Northwestern in the Big Ten opener and then she had that overtime goal, the golden goal against Illinois. All right, Michigan, they get Hillary Beal back in goal. USU 14, U15, U17, U20. Now in the pipes for Michigan. Well, uh, this is a big game for her to step in and perform. She's coming off a meniscus injury, which kept her out of the U-20 World Cup. It's been a long absence, but her assets, a strong aerial presence, and a great shot-stopping ability. No easy ones in Big Ten women's soccer 2018 style. It's number 17, Wisconsin. It's the Michigan Wolverines, and it's coming up next on BTN. You don't think it'll happen to you, and you surely don't think it'll happen twice. I've lost two homes in my lifetime. First, it was a fire. My agent was right there and helped me rebuild. Then the tornado hit and destroyed everything again. Both times, my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Join T-Mobile and get Netflix included for the whole family so you can get lost in space in your own backyard or get pumped up for your grand entrance. T-Mobile lets you watch your favorite movies and shows in more places without paying more. Get an unlimited family plan with Netflix on us. And right now at T-Mobile, buy one Samsung Galaxy S9 and get one free. It's back. And it's front. No, really. The Triple Double Crunch Wrap $5 box is back. And it's still all mains, no sides, with two crunchy tacos and a medium soda. Just $5. Only at Taco Bell. Sports fans are celebrating exclusive new fan gear by Fanatics. Unique, one-of-a-kind designs you won't find anywhere else. From all the leagues, teams, and players you love. Shop now and get 20% off with promo code BREAKAWAY. Fanatics.com. Officially licensed everything. Hi, I'm just looking at my account, and I've got all this extra cash back. Yep, that's your cash back match. Only Discover will automatically match all the cash back new card members earn at the end of their first year. You matched everything I earned this year? Yeah. Woo! More money, more money! Yeah! It's all very exciting. I'm gonna spread the news. Spread it wide. It's cash back match, people! You know that. You all work here. New card members get a dollar-for-dollar dollar match at the end of their first year. Only from Discover. Women's Soccer on BTN is brought to you by State Farm, here to help life go right. Ann Arbor, Michigan, busy weekend. Women's Soccer tonight on Saturday. The Wolverines football team welcomes in Nebraska. Always good to be at the University of Michigan Soccer Stadium. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Paula Wilkins and the Wisconsin Badgers. They'll go with a 4-4-2 with a diamond in the middle. Yeah, you'll see Pickett more the attacking player and Ty kind of uh, holding in the midfield. And the starting lineup for the Michigan Wolverines under their new head coach, Jennifer Klein. Klein is an experienced coach, at one point the youngest Division I coach when she was at UNLV. As we said in the open, so good to see Hillary Beal in goal for the Michigan Wolverines. So much experience with the U.S. youth system. And spoke to her keeper coach with the youth national program Ian Joyce and uh, he spoke so highly of her and it was uh, 
a very difficult day the day prior to the announcement of the roster for the U-20s and she hurt her knee and did not have the opportunity to stay in France for that competition. New goalkeeper for the Wisconsin Badgers, Jordan Bloomer, now gets the chance after so many exciting saves from Caitlin Clem. Big shoes to fill for Bloomer. Uh, thus far, uh, she's filled them admirably. Her biggest thing now is game management, and that comes with experience. 7-1-1 one and one at .85 goals against average. Let's take a look at Glenn Crook's keys here for both teams. Well, first for the Wisconsin Badgers, the organized press, they love to press, and then the key there is not to allow Michigan to change the point of attack. The counterattack, well, Michigan likes to get their uh, fullbacks in, and that leaves their central defenders uh, kind of isolated, and uh, that's where Wisconsin hopes to attack, and that's part of that isolating defense for Michigan is one of the keys. Those center backs have to be very good, 1v1 and uh, 2v2 tonight. Michigan Wolverines in their home blues, the Wisconsin Badgers and their visiting whites. Michigan Soccer Stadium, home to the Michigan men's and women's soccer teams. Phenomenal facilities for every sports team in Ann Arbor. It's simply amazing. One player to watch closely, uh, Emma Cooper, there, she's uh, preparing to take the throw in, Dean. Uh, she started the game against Indiana, Big Ten opener, as a winger on the right side and assisted on the opening goal. But by the end of that match, she was a fullback. She played uh, in the on the left side of the back and the right side of the back against Purdue. So uh, right now, she's a fullback in this system. Here comes Wisconsin. Try to find Rice. Rice has scored some big goals in her young career. The sophomore from Noblesville, Indiana. Michigan, middle of the park. Stratagakis will lose it. Dane will come back and whistle for the foul. Meanwhile, Paula Wilkins, what a coach in her 12th season. She led Wisconsin to the 2015 regular season title, the 2014 Big Ten tournament title. You see her record there, great success at Penn State. One of the things I love about her, though, she was a defender at UMass, and she captained that 93 squad to the College Cup. Then she took Penn State to the 2002 College Cup, at the time becoming the first person to play in a College Cup and coach in a College Cup. That's a pretty uh, fantastic record on her part. And uh, the defender in her, she has that sort of mentality, and she carries that into her programs. Free kick opportunity here. A planned play as Rice will drop it over. Not able to run it down there is Sella. Maya Sella. Played back by Wesley. This Wisconsin Badgers team, I felt like they were on a free roll last year. In fact, Paula Wilkins said as much. Such a young team. They only lost two players from a team that had phenomenal success last year kind of unexpected success and you see their record this year this is a dangerous team not just in big ten conference play but even in the ncaa tournament in my opinion yeah and the first rpi has been released uh, this early in the season it doesn't always have that uh, much uh, significance but wisconsin at number 24 and uh, look they're always competitive uh, in just about every match they play, uh, not only within the conference, but on the national stage as well. Rhodes dropped it over. Good job on that back line for Michigan. Well, the central defenders there, Dane and Joyner side by side. Dane uh, injured early uh, on this season and is just coming back to full fitness. She was able to play in both matches on the weekend, the opening weekend of the Big Ten. Michigan's home opener in Big Ten play. First two games on the road, including that. No way, anyway, you slice it. Heartbreak City, and I'll tell you what, Michigan's head coach there in her first year, Jennifer Klein, she said, you know what, we flushed it. We didn't even look at it. We just got rid of it. And we focused on Purdue, and Purdue's a pretty good team, young team, and that's a big win for 
coach Klein coming off that disappointing 3-2 result against Indiana. Uh, I think that's such an important result. It's on the road. So you're uh, dealing with a lot of different things there, but for uh, for Michigan to recover from that, because that uh, Lisa and I did that game last week, and that had to be heartbreaking the way it all went down. Michigan bunkering down five, six players inside the 18. Wesley will get it out wide. Wesley, chance to get it in and around the six. Headed back, rolling out of bounds, and safety first. It'll be a throw in for Wisconsin. And here she is, Jennifer Klein, her first season at Michigan, replacing Greg Ryan, the former U.S. Women's National Team coach. And of course, Jennifer Klein was the associate head coach for the University of Southern Cal that won the 2016 National Championship under Kadani McAlpine. I talked to Kadani today, and he said Jennifer Klein was the coach on the staff that would fire up the team and bring that passion and, and a lot of adrenaline, either pregame or at halftime. She would bring some serious fire, and certainly he wished her well. He did say that after the first call, in talking to Michigan about the job when she was breaking it down he said look you're gonna you're gonna get this job but knowing how loyal she was to USC he said here's how we're gonna handle this when they offer you the job don't worry about what you're gonna say to me because you're fired <laughs> <laughs> that made it easy well of course they obviously had a good laugh about that well the biggest thing she said she learned from Kadani McAlpine and uh, working at USC was that it was a process it takes time and you look how they built that program uh, which led to the national championship back at the other end the, the first test for Hillary Beal coming off that long absence was an inadvertent header by her uh, fullback Siri Yeka that she had to extend and save that was a near own goal earlier so Beal is ready there she is yeah, you're right. She had to scramble along the end line and then was saved as Yekka, you're right, just cleared it out of there. And a safety first measure. Michigan going with a back line of Emma Cooper, Joyner, Jada Dane. Of course, ties to Wisconsin. Her dad, 1999 Heisman Trophy winner for the Badgers, Ron Dane. Good stuff here from Michigan. Castro, looks like a handball right there. Castro wanted the handball. She won't get that, but she will get a throw in over near the corner flag. Is let's see what you see here, Glenn. Well, it was awkward no. and uh, good not call because it really hit the armpit area rather than the arm. Okay, it did hit her hand after that, but inadvertent, so it certainly would have been tough to call PK. So they didn't. No, sir. Michigan. And on the right side, it'll go off of Michigan and come back to the Badgers. And you see Emma Cooper's attacking prowess right there. Up uh, from her fullback spot, she's getting in deep, and that's what Jen Klein wants her fullbacks to do. And uh, Taylor Timko would normally be at that right back position. Uh, and that's why Emma Cooper, one of the reasons that she's dropped into the, uh, the fullback slot on the right. Timko expected to be out a, another couple of weeks. So Jennifer Klein, the new coach for Michigan as Wisconsin plays it to Rice. They go out of bounds and corner kick, corner kick Wisconsin. Victoria Pickett will come over for short corners at times for Wisconsin. This time the Badgers, they'll go near post. Headed right out. Keep an eye on Pickett. You see her, Glenn Crooks, leaking over there near the corner flag. Well, Michigan sends two defenders. That would make it 2v2. If they sent only one, I think they would roll it to her. So now they go. 
inside the six, headed out by Wisconsin that time. It'll be a Michigan goal kick. Grace that Douglas. Was, yeah, and th that was a, a difficult header. I mean, she was facing away from the goal and was just trying to get her body position, spin, pivot, whatever, and get it on goal, but it, it was very little chance to get it under the bar. A little bit of trouble here in the defensive third for Michigan as Hillary Beal did play in seven matches last year, six starts for that injury. We'll throw in here for Rhodes and Wisconsin. Out of bounds, and it'll come back to Hillary Beal and the Michigan Wolverines. Rhodes has a, a moderately long throw. You saw Cam Murtha come over and try to post up and they're looking for her to flick on off of that so it doesn't reach the edge of the six i go from the edge of the six on that's a long throw it's it's about five yards shy of that still can be dangerous in the area michigan still waiting to call the name of nikki hernandez who's got those six goals and five assists for the wolverines playing up top there with abby castro and riley martin and of course riley martin was the hero a year ago. There's Nikki Hernandez, the sophomore from Naperville, Illinois. 17 points, not a bad start to the 2018 campaign. With a position that's uh, a, a little different than she had in her freshman year, she moved from the midfield to a striker role. And you see, she also has a bundle of assists, five. That's because she's comfortable coming back into the midfield. We'll look for that tonight, uh, as well as getting close to goal and having the ability to finish. She leads the Conference in points and tied for first in goals. Michigan, very patient, trying to build it out of the back, but they've turned it over, Glenn, quite, a, quite often early on here. Well, that's exactly what Paula Wilkins has designed in terms of press, pressing them in certain spots. And you see where the press is. It's uh, on the outside portion of the field. And then can they lock them in, win the ball, and then counter off of that? That's a big part of the game plan for Wisconsin. There's Danny Rhodes. Had a great campaign a year ago. She's got a knack for scoring big time goals against big time teams. Last year, she scored against Florida, scored against Virginia. She had a phenomenal goal against Michigan State. The bigger the game, the bigger her game. And clutch, five game winning goals last year. Her first game winner of what Wisconsin will hope will be many was the big golden goal on Sunday. Yeah, against Illinois. Let's take a look at it. Well, here we are, and uh, what looked like an innocent ball out of the back, and notice no call. The AR thought it was a foul, and the referee said play on, and good thing for Wisconsin, and this is why she's a great finisher. A toe poke at the end, that was the best way to strike the ball. Meanwhile, Michigan, I believe, has scored. The Michigan Wolverines have made it one nothing here against Wisconsin. Danny Rhodes scoring that winner against Illinois, but Michigan now going on top one nothing. All right, well here uh, the ball is won well, but it's always the second ball, almost always the second ball that's critical. And how about that finish by Riley Martin, left-footed and uh, perfectly placed as it kiss, kisses off the uh, back post. And wow, what a finish. And uh, give her credit, she pounces on the second ball after Wisconsin cleared it, but in a meager way, and then was able to just carry it in and finish it. Riley Martin had the winner in Madison last year for the Michigan Wolverines, and she gives Michigan a one nothing lead here at the Michigan Soccer Stadium. Played over the top. Hernandez was offside. There she is, Riley Martin, who uh, is is really dangerous. And you know, one of the things we've noted in her game is her ability to go to the inside and strike it right-footed from that left wing position. That's a left-footed drive from outside the area. Great goal. The Badgers, see if they can answer. 
Riley Martin, the senior, from Carmel, Indiana. Her sister, Aaliyah, sits right behind her in the midfield. How proud is that family, a Big Ten family, mom and dad, Indiana and Purdue graduates. Riley Martin scored that winner five minutes into overtime last year in Madison. And you're talking about in Riley Martin, 2015, she was all Big Ten freshman team, 2016, second team Big Ten last year, third team Big Ten, five goals on the season now. So another, quote, all Big Ten type season for Riley Martin. Yeah, and she, she does it on both sides of the ball well. We'll notice how hard she works to track back from her wing position in the defensive shape. Out of a 4-3-3, the winger has a defensive responsibilities as well. Hernandez going to take a shot with her left foot, deflected. Picked up in goal there by Jordan Bloomer. Sarah Stratagakis, very active, searching for the rebound on that out of her midfield spot. She was in the area. one nothing Michigan coming up after this one. Another good one, Big Ten women's soccer, Penn State and Northwestern. Pass goes wanting. There you see it. Number 20, Penn State at number 21, Northwestern. Erica Dombot, Michael Moynihan, two of the best coaches in the country. The Big Ten has a, a, a great stable of head coaches and those two are at or near the top. Erica has had uh, fantastic success, and Michael has uh, helped turn that program into uh, a national contender. All right, Glenn, I know we saw your keys early, but as I see Wisconsin here down one nothing, knowing that Michigan does have those explosive front runners, I think we've got to see more of Pickett, don't we, for Paula Wilkins to get involved in the offensive attack for the Badgers? Yeah, they're best when she's on the ball. She has the ability to do a lot of things with it. She can penetrate on the dribble, uh, and then that draws defenders for her to either push out wide and then get into the box. But she's also very uh, almost elegant in her ability to change the point and provide good numbers on the weak side. Talking about elegant, Michigan has been dealing her early on. Look at these passes. Hernandez, big save. Bloomer is there. Hernandez kept alive. Five or six meticulous passes from Michigan. Probably should be two nothing. Yeah, and that was very calm in the area by Nikki Hernandez. She did the hard part. A shot like that, she made it kind of easy for the keeper as uh, it was towards the hand. She just needed to put that low on either side or roof it on either side. But Stratagakis running out of the midfield, that's her on that left edge of the box. And how about that? It's a big save. Bloomer came out and made herself big. So it wasn't automatic. Wow. Hernandez denied her seventh goal. Abby Castro was wide open if you just go ahead and drop it. You ever go goal score, oh, no right? Way. She's on fire. No but way. I'm telling you, she was wide open. Little side of your foot right there and tap it in. But you're right. If you're if you're having a great season leading the Big Ten in points, you're going to keep going. Well, that's, sometimes that's the extra pass you don't need to make. But you could be right, D. Yeah, we'll show you the highlights at halftime. You'll see Castro having a cup of coffee over in the far post. And back to the Michigan goal just for a moment. You know, they were having trouble trying to build because that's that's part of what Jen Klein is trying to do with this program. And you noticed it was it was a direct ball out of the back. Second ball, get around. That's not necessarily their plan, but they, they identified that's how they were going to get out of the area. Another corner kick for Wisconsin. Beal. Got enough of it. Rice, hard tackle for Michigan. One back by Rice. Rice can shoot it, but right to Beal. That was Siri Yeka, who played it right into the feet of Rice. So uh, Yeka, needs, Yeka needs to settle down just a bit. An inadvertent header as she tried to clear earlier, which Hillary Beal had to sprawl and save. Now this one's set up 
for Lauren Rice. Hey, Coming into this game, Wisconsin averaging almost eight corners per game. Michigan just about three, and Wisconsin already has four corners, and just got this one going. Four corners and none for Michigan, but Michigan with the only goal. Let's take a look at it again. The first goal here for the Michigan Wolverines. Assist Stratagakis, that's her right there. And here's the second uh, second ball, uh, correction, I'm sorry, that's Riley with the goal. I'm thinking about the Stratagakis near assist. And that second ball where Riley is able to gobble it up. Little touch to the left and uh, clinical, eh? Nice finish. Stratagakis is Canadian, so that's why I went with the A. <laughs> Several Canadians have been a part of both these teams over the years. Of course, that pipeline from Canada has really made women's college soccer thrive. And when you think about the next level as well, NWSL, I mean, that the play right now at NWSL is off the charts. And that includes Rose Lavelle, a Wisconsin Badger. Martin. Martin on the corner kick. Corner kick, Michigan. Oh, you pick it earlier the central midfielder for Wisconsin and how oh, Paula Wilkins suggested that she was quicker than Lavelle and she also mentioned Ali Krieger who she coached at Penn State to really quick players on the ball yeah, that is big time praise yeah big time praise when you think about Ali Krieger I mean she's a Hall of Famer in my opinion and Rose Lavelle she's gonna make the World Cup roster yes she is Martin Kept in bounds. Knocked out of bounds. Then I got to give you credit. You said this was going to be a good one. You said despite that loss to Indiana, Michigan can play. They score goals. They play attractive soccer. And you're right. They had trouble early on putting passes together, but they have been firing at all cylinders here, putting all kinds of pressure on Wisconsin. And Stratagakis again. She's the attacking midfielder. Keep that in mind. But what she reads is when the striker is out of the area, she'll penetrate in. And you see where uh, Nikki Hernandez was a couple of yards inside the 18. So that's where Stratagakis sees the space, attacks it. That was very close. Yeah, great service there, Stratagakis. Indeed, with three goals in the last four games. Just a couple inches away from making this one two to nothing. And I think as the season progresses, you're under a first-year coach, Jen Klein. She's got a different type of shape and system. She's instilling on the attacking side in particular. And uh, each practice at each game, you're going to most likely get a little better as time moves on. The players will connect better. And I think we're seeing some of that with their win over Purdue, and now uh, the early lead against Wisconsin. Yeah, Stratagakis, as you tipped your hat to Canada, I mean, she's played on every U team and has made appearances for the Canada senior national team. I, I think she'll be running the show in the center of the park for the full team at some point. Well, I talked to Christine Sinclair today, and she said she's going to play one more World Cup and an Olympics. And then she said, you know what? I may keep on playing. She's 35 years young. <laughs> I mean, what a machine. That's, that's an apt description, a machine. Speaking of Canadians, of course, Yekka as well, the left back. She was 16 years old when she made her first full national team appearance. It's pretty phenomenal. Great international experience for her. For me, her game has stalled just a bit. I mean, this is a kid, and now she's she's being given the green light to get forward at any opportunity. In 37 career games, Yeka has one assist and no goal. She does have five shots on goal in 2018, and I think that will develop as well. But she's a dangerous player out of the back. Just haven't seen that sort of dynamic attacking skills that we know she has in, in, in uh, her collegiate career yet. 
Jennifer Klein, the new coach for the Michigan Wolverines, electing to go with a familiar formation in women's soccer, a 4-3-3. And it's exciting to watch those three front runners up top work in with their midfielders. They're going to put some heat on this very good Badger team. Comes in at number 17 in the country. Well, you look at four of those front five players. Uh, Amy Castro just getting back. She's been nursing an injury, but Stratagakis, Hernandez, Aaliyah Martin, and Riley Martin, that's pretty good. And the Martin sisters work very well together. Danny Rhodes trying to put some pressure on that back line. Here comes one of the Martin sisters, Aaliyah Martin. Plays it. Long was trying to find Stratagakis. There's Riley Martin. Good tackle. Riley Martin wins it. Referee letting him play. Riley Martin's got one from around there. Taken down. And again, referee lets him play. No whistle. Turnover again for Michigan. Hard sliding tackle. The Wolverines. Abby Castro back across. Hernandez was lurking, trying to find points 18 and 19. Cammy Bogalski did well to cut in front and head that ball clear and out of danger. That's the key there. Uh, from that angle, it, it may have been uh, a little more difficult for her, but uh, Michigan back on the ball, but it was an important clearance. Michigan. After turning the ball over early on, has controlled the run of play here. They've got the lead. It'll fall again. Leah Martin. Castro tried to play that in directly to uh, Hernandez. That was difficult. She had a one-two wall pass combination with Stratagakis. I was just seeing one-two get it in, and now she's working at that back four and seeing what kind of movement she can get. Abby Castro, seven brothers and sisters. Part of the Castro family. If you're down in Naples, Florida, you might run into one of the Castros. <laughs> Rhodes, so good to see her back out there and healthy again. Wisconsin has had phenomenal success while she was getting back into form. Rhodes wanted it back, trying to get it to her with Sella. And there's a Leah Martin who's considered an attacking midfielder. The 4-3-3 shape, it's two attackers in that triangle, Stratagakis and Aaliyah Martin. Look how, how far she tracked back to intercept that square ball. The only thing from Sella, she could have had a little more pace on it. You gotta hit it like a bullet when you're close to goal. Throw in Wisconsin. That's Rice who will do the work back to goal. Sella down near the end line, kept alive by Rhodes. Denied again by Michigan. How good was that from Sella? To not only keep it in play, but potentially put it face of goal. Better work, though, from Wisconsin to win it back after they lose it as Alexis Ty, the Richard senior, coming back for an extra year. There's Sella, sophomore from Evanston, Illinois. And she was prepared for her starting role this year. Sella came in for Becca Harrison, one of the uh, two graduating losses for this Wisconsin team, would come in at the 15 minute mark of the first half. Uh, so she had a role to play and, and certainly got used to the system. Yeah, she played a ton of minutes. Really enjoyed watching Becca Harrison. She was a fighter and a scrapper, always came up with big assists and big goals. So Becca Harrison and Caitlin Clem move on. Subscribe to BTM Plus and gain access to great non-televised soccer matchups all season long. And enjoy them wherever you are. Get BTN Plus now, available on BTN to go. Alongside Glenn Crooks, I'm Dean Linky. Back to back Big Ten and women's soccer games on BTN. Penn State and Northwestern will follow this one.
That sort of turnover, Claire Shea trying to play an entrance ball, pretty much unforced. If, if it's not clearly there, step on it, change the point, accept the space in front of you. This so called against Michigan. I think it may have been out of bounds over on the far side. There's Shea, and she's getting her opportunity due to a Sammy Klitke injury, freshman who was all Big Ten last year's central defender. So uh, Shea uh, filling in admirably. As Paula Wilkins said, she's quicker than she looks. She's a top five speed on the team, among the top five in pure speed amongst the uh, Badgers. Knocked out of bounds by Wisconsin. Riley Martin scored the winner last year in Madison, and she's got the only goal so far. Michigan leading Wisconsin, the number 17 team in the country by a score of one to nothing. Ann Arbor, Michigan, Michigan Soccer Stadium. And there is Riley Martin. There's Glenn Todia playing with her sister, Aaliyah. Glenn, I gotta tell you, I've got two boys, and one year they got to play together on the basketball court, and it was the greatest year of my life. So you gotta believe the parents of the Martins are absolutely loving this, because there's nothing better than watching your kids play an athletic event, and then watching them play it together. Are you kidding me? Nah, that's uh, because so many parents have to deal with. Here's another shot, Hernandez, big save by Bloomer. Bloomer has come up with a couple. That's a handball on Michigan. And Jordan Bloomer keeping Wisconsin in this as Michigan could have two or three already. What a save. And she came up big against Hernandez earlier, point blank, and now has to go down quickly to her left. And uh, technically, two tremendous saves. Keepers work on those two situations often. You know our great crew are going to rack those two saves because that could be the difference. Michigan has been dominant after those kind of five first sloppy minutes. Even Beal looked a little shaky, right, getting her first start. The much, much heralded U.S. Youth National Team goalkeeper. But since then, Michigan, they're passing. They've kept it on the carpet plan. They've got it out wide and put balls in front of the goal. Oh, and, the, and the match now has some great ebb and flow, end to end. Tackle there as Ty came in. Michigan wins it back. Alexis Ty, she held back a little bit and tried to attack that from behind. Not a bad idea. The ball played across. Uh, again, maybe a little bit more pace. You really have to drill the ball on the deck in that area of the field. Wisconsin starting to settle down here in the midfield. They'll push it out wide right. That means Rice and Rhodes usually are there. Instead, it's Beal. All right, Glenn, you coached for such a long time, had great success at Rutgers. I got to ask you, in soccer, Michigan, they survived kind of a little sloppy play. Then they get the goal. Then they really should be up 2 3 nothing, but they're not. As the coach that's up one nothing, that should be two or three, how do you manage the fact that you haven't separated yourself just yet? Well, you have to, this is where experience comes in with players. If you're having success and you're that close, just continue to uh, do this right here. Hernandez with the diving header. And the great service again. And the triple-edged sword up top for the Michigan Wolverines has been effective. Right, so this would be, uh, I wanted you to finish that call, but Hernandez now with a diving header, so she had the point-blank effort, which she may have been able to do a little better with, but Bloomer made herself big. Then hits a great shot low that Bloomer has to go down and save, and then here, Hernandez just can't connect the way uh, she would like to get it on frame, but that's what you do. You just keep getting at it, and eventually it will come. And if it doesn't, you have to be secure in the effectiveness that you've uh, gained throughout the match. Wisconsin quickly the other way. Speed knocked out of bounds. And there is Pickett. Just as we talked about, if Wisconsin's going to get back into this, they're going to need to find this talented Victoria Pickett, another one of those outstanding Canadians.
looks like a, a complete zonal system defensively. Emily Borgman into the game for Paula Wilkins. She miss hit that one. She's already got game winning goals against Marquette and Washington. So number 19, part of 11 players that have points on the season. You see those two game winning goals tied for third in the Big Ten. So she's got the ice in the veins, kind of Mark Segber's style, the former Wisconsin Badger for the men's team, and John Trask. They play Maryland tomorrow on the Big Ten Network. It'll be a, another, uh, I'll predict another very good match. It'll be competitive. <laughs> How's that? It'll be feisty. Feisty. It's tomorrow night, Wisconsin and Maryland. Ludwig Field, home of the crew, the student supporters for the Maryland Terrapins. Always a wonderful environment. It's actually a good crowd here at the Michigan Soccer Stadium. Near side is pretty well kept with fans in the stands. A little bit of wind here in Ann Arbor. The Wisconsin Badgers kind of going with this theme of Michigan taking over. They have not had a shot in more than 15 minutes. See the fans in the stand. Always nice to hear the supporters uh, when you're at home. And it's a big part of the experience. I know we're going to get a, a big feel for that at Ludwig Field tomorrow. And Wisconsin winning the ball right back. But giving it right back to Michigan. Quite a bit of red here. The Badgers family travels pretty well. Michigan. Stratagakis, who has been outstanding early on for Michigan, as has Riley Martin. Hernandez has looked good. Well, that long service out of the back from Joyner a moment ago, she hits Hernandez. Hernandez does well because, again, she's a, a more natural attacking midfielder, and uh, she just drifts back in between the lines and is able to uh, gather that in. That's not a bad early ball for Michigan to consider in order to break pressure. Beal can boom it. She sends it well past midfield, and then it's about winning the second ball. This time, Wisconsin does win it. See now the defensive shape for Michigan. Been pretty good. You can get caught up talking about their attacking players. Michigan will need to be disciplined in the back if they want to hang on to this lead. Push far side into the 18. Nobody home. Cleared out of there by Michigan. Calcagno. That's Steph Fabre, the reserve of winger for Wisconsin. She's the one that cut the ball back earlier where Alexis Ty arrived just a little bit too late, but she's uh, she's caused some issues on the flank on the right side against the Michigan defenders. Alexis Ty, redshirt senior from California. This Wisconsin team does feature nine players from the great state of Wisconsin. How about Jen Klein saying that her mantra right away is trying to keep the best players in Michigan with the Michigan Wolverines. Tom Saxton has always done a real good job finding the top players with the Spartans, but they're sprinkled all over the country. She wants to keep them here and have them play in Ann Arbor. And she mentioned some top programs, including schools in her own conference like Penn State. And that when you have depth of talent within your state, that is always the mantra. It's almost your job to keep the best players home. There's competition within home, but uh, I agree with Jen Klein. Glenn, another question for the coach. I mean, you talk about a big time flush. I mean, there are teams that 
could have broken down and they're on the road as well after being up two nothing against a, by the way a very good indiana team that's top the conference with amy burberry but they didn't they went into purdue purdue is a feisty team young team with a whole lot of heart and they got to win and they play better soccer which is also a credit on the sunday after the thursday you know, playing these two games in such a short period of time as uh, one of the wisconsin players pickett. right now okay. this is major victoria pickett Let's see if we get a closer look at it 50 50 ball and it's hard to see exactly knee to knee and uh, that's a very painful experience depending on uh, what part of the knee. I will say if it's knee to knee, there's generally not damage. Victoria Pickett. Watch, watch the right knee's hit, but then I think it's the left knee that she grabs. See, now left uh, knee's down on the ground. Now watch yeah. her grab her left knee. Yeah, her foot came underneath the, the leg and hyperextended. I mean, there's some pain, but uh, by the way, she uh, walked off without uh, too much of a gait issue. She, I uh, think she'll be okay with uh, under six to play in the half. I don't know if uh, maybe they'll uh, wait till halftime, try to examine her. Shots to five for Michigan. At the moment, nobody has checked in for Pickett, so we may see her be able to get back in there through the... There she is. She's in there already. So that is good news, folks. This is a special talent. But Michigan's composure when Wisconsin gets into their defensive third after those first five minutes has been pretty good. Yeah, they're, they're getting good numbers in the box defensively off the service. But Pickett, there's what you saw. She unbalanced two defenders to open up to the uh, wide right area. And uh, once again, that gave Fabre uh, another opportunity. Michigan looking for some help. Time to go backwards to go forwards and let's see them continue to try to build it out of the back working now michigan they've stuck with their game plan didn't panic and you can hear the coaching staff saying build it that's exactly what they've done this is about the ninth or tenth pass for michigan and just like that they have it on the right side great soccer here for the wolverines and one thing about building, it does give Wisconsin a chance to recover. They had eight players behind the ball. So, uh, Michigan patient, play back into their own area, and they'll get a throw in deep in uh, Wisconsin's end. Jen Klein has gone to her bench here as well, up one to nothing. And she's part of our State Farm State of Success. She's put in her time, right? Assistant coach for U.S. soccer at the U19 level. Associate head coach for the national champion USC team. Big, pretty good player as well for Arizona. So a high-level playing experience and a variety of uh, levels on the coaching side. And it's good to be uh, uh, observing sometimes, not as the head coach, but as, as the assistant, to see what you're going to take away, to see what you might want to insert on your own. But she did have that head coaching position at UNLV, and at the time, youngest Division I coach in the country. Yeah, she'll take all of that, right? Uh, mix it all together, and 
now bring that fire to Michigan. Placing Greg Ryan, he had a 103-64-36 overall record, 50-35-24 and 24 in the Big Ten. The former U.S. Women's National Team coach and pretty clear indication, Michigan taking women's soccer seriously is that record's not terrible, but they want to elevate it. And I also think it's interesting that you go ahead and find somebody that has those West Coast roots because the back part of that mantra of getting those Michigan players was, hey, we're going to find some special players all over the country. Yeah, and Southern California is not a bad spot to start. And one of her mentors, interestingly enough, is uh, on the opposite touchline, Paula Wilkins. A great credit to Paula. Kat Mertz as well, who she worked at UNLV with prior to becoming the head coach there. Paula Wilkins, first class, and you can put her in there. Just look at her winning percentage as one of the very best women's soccer coaches in the country, and she certainly appreciated those kind words from Jen Klein, because part of her mission is to continue to see more females get head coaching positions in the women's game. She's out front on that. Bill, and you know, there's uh, there's certain aspects and there's statistics which will tell you that uh, there's uh, a, a dearth of female coaches uh, in the game. You know, when you look at the entire landscape of soccer. So, uh, yes, having a role model and a mentor who's been around and been through it, like Paula Wilkins, um, she's an inspiration to a young coach like Jen Klein. See if Wisconsin, like Michigan, both teams have gone to their bench to replace their front runners, bring a little energy, and of course, that'll also mean that. When you start the second half, those players will be rested. Well, the Michigan mindset right now, go into the locker room up 1-0. Do not concede. They, uh, they will form a block. I don't think they're going to be too intent on trying to get forward right now. Well, get forward, but not necessarily in a real controlled short passing way. Cannot forget that Jordan Bloomer, who replaced the great Caitlin Clem with two huge saves for the Badgers. Otherwise, it's two or three nothing Michigan. Well, honestly, to, to reach the top level, to, ha to compete for a Big Ten championship, to compete for a national championship, you have to have a keeper that can come up big once or twice in every match. Has to happen. There's the goal scorer, number 12, Riley Martin. She had the game winner last year, five minutes into overtime in Madison. And if this one ended, she would have the game winner here as the Michigan Wolverines lead Wisconsin by a score of one to nothing. So pleased to be joined by Jennifer Klein in her first season. And coach, I got to tell you, that flushing of that Indiana game, remarkable. Big win over Purdue. And this first 45, short of maybe the first five minutes, your team looked very good. Your thoughts, coach? Yeah, I think once we got the goal, we really settled down and started to move the ball quite nicely. I think we've been pretty good uh, defensively. Just want to make sure moving forward, we just continue to take care of the ball um, and, and stay organized. Jen, is there any uh, sense of frustration? Uh, you could be up 2 or 3 nil at this point. Bloomer came up with a couple of big saves, but uh, uh, Hernandez in particular, one time, point blank. Yeah, I, it's, you know, we talk about production um, within the goal zone and really taking taking advantage of our chances in there. So that part's a little bit, you know, frustrating just because you get those opportunities and you want to take advantage. But very happy that we're creating them. Now we just need some composure and put them in the back of the net. Coach, glad to have you in the Big Ten. Enjoy the rest of the season. Thanks for being with us. Thank you guys so much. You can tell another good coach in the Big Ten ranks. After the first five minutes, it was all Michigan, including Riley Martin with the only goal in the first half. They could add a couple more. Michigan on top of number 17, Wisconsin, 1-0. I can't believe it, that everything sticks to Stefan Dick's hands. 
Now, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on the car insurance at Geico. Cool, huh? Yeah. He plays football, huh? Yeah. Believe it. Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Halftime, Michigan leading number 17, Wisconsin, by a score of one to nothing. Of course, Ann Arbor will host Nebraska, Michigan, and Nebraska football this weekend. And don't forget, Saturday, BTN tailgate returns as Dave, Jerry, Howard, Spice, and Michelle are on campus in Iowa City to set the stage for the huge West Division showdown between the Hawkeyes and the Badgers. BTN Tailgate, presented by Geico, returns Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern right here on BTN. Riley Page Martin has had some big goals against the Wisconsin Badgers, including this one in the first half to give Michigan a 1-0 lead on BTN. Impressive first 45 minutes from the Michigan Wolverines here at the Michigan Soccer Stadium as they lead the Wisconsin Badgers by a score of one to nothing. Dean Linky along with Glenn Crooks. And this Michigan team with those three front runners, they've been dangerous. They've been really dangerous, in particular Riley Martin, who, interestingly enough, Part of the defensive scheme that Paula Wilkins, the Wisconsin coach, wanted to set up was to force her wide, and it was where he, she scored her goal, was wide and with her left peg. Riley Martin now has 20 career goals for the Michigan Wolverines. Glenn, let's take a look at number 20. Well, here's a, just a direct service off a free kick, and the second ball gobbled up by Martin, no problem. Then the acceleration to the outside. Well, that's a big time finish. That's professional for Riley Martin. That's a lethal left foot. Michigan, though, looked like they were going to get goal number two and goal number three. Well, they started working some things in the uh, final third, and a nice little Cruyff by Nikki Hernandez. And what a save by Jordan Bloomer. And then Hernandez again hits it first time, and Bloomer uh, with another tremendous save. And uh, that save and both those actually have kept uh, Wisconsin in this match. As you can see, Michigan's been fairly dominant. Six shots for Michigan, just three for Wisconsin. Corner kicks, Wisconsin, though, they did have those five corner kicks, but it's the Martin goal in minute 13 that has Michigan feeling pretty good on top of Wisconsin, one nothing. We'll take a look around the Big Ten when we come back. and you need your logo to be perfect, you need certainty. At 4imprint, we give you the ultimate guarantee because when something has your logo on it, it matters to you, your customers, your coworkers, and to us. Our wide selection always changes to keep up with the latest trends. But there is one thing we deliver that's timeless, certainty. Explore thousands of promotional products at 4imprint.com. 4imprint, for certain. Michigan leads Wisconsin one nothing here at halftime, and we've told you quite a bit. They are no easy ones in Big Ten women's soccer this year. Excited to take a look around the Big Ten. Some news and notes here, Glenn. Well, the Indiana Hoosiers are are the story of the Big Ten. Two and zero atop the uh, Big Ten, and I look at a reserve forward named Melanie Forbes who set up the game-winning goal against Michigan in overtime scored the second goal in a 3-0 win on Sunday over Michigan State three Big Ten teams ranked including the game coming up after this one number 20 Penn State number 21 Northwestern coaches get Indiana in that top 25 why well look at the standings you already said it Amy Burberry's team 2-0, 6 one and 2 We know about Wisconsin. Rutgers, they're always good with Coach O'Neill. 
Yeah, they, uh, they're playing in a, a similar manner as always, possession-oriented, go forward when it's on, and have had a, a, a little difficulty at the back, which they're shoring up right now. Also, give Janet Rayfield all kinds of credit. The Illinois team, rough season a year ago, and they're sitting at 5-4 and four with a couple heartbreak losses. Stephanie Golan, the Minnesota Golden Gophers, you know they're going to make some noise. Northwestern, Michigan State, a nice young team. Purdue as well. The Buckeyes, they won the Big Ten regular season last year, but, man, they lost the spine of their team. We'll come back with the start of the second half. Big Ten women's soccer on BTN. I am the DQ $4 burger in Blizzard. I'm a mini Blizzard and a burger for just four bucks. Holy cheeseburgers, it comes with a Blizzard, is what people will say. Because I'm not fast food, I am fan food. Michigan on top of Wisconsin here at halftime by a score of one to nothing. And we are pleased to be joined by the head coach of the Badgers, Paula Wilkins. And Paula, first off, Jordan Bloomer, your new goalkeeper, keeping you in this one. A couple big saves, coach. Said that at uh, halftime to the team. I said Jordan's kept you guys in the game, making it one nothing. We got to go out and do it for her. Paula, you, you talked about you wanted to press and keep it on one side of the field. It seemed like early on, that's exactly how the game was going. What, where did it change? I think when they scored the goal, uh, you know, I, we're looking for some leadership from our team right now because um, I think we lost some of the details as the game wore on and we need to do way better with that. Um, we talked about refocusing in the, in, at halftime and doing those things right again. And I think Michigan's posing us an interesting tactical problem with the numbers they're getting behind the ball. And we talked about different ways that we can break that down. Phenomenal breakdown right there, Coach Wilkins. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Paula Wilkins. Led Wisconsin to the 2015 regular season title a year after winning the Big Ten tournament. Of course, Rose Lavelle, one of those exciting players. It was Rose Lavelle that attracted great players like Danny Rhodes, right? And Pickett in the midfield. And it's a young team, this Wisconsin. They lost two players, and they're still a pretty young team. Rhodes is definitely the uh, talisman. That first goal she scored of the season against Northwestern was just a true uh, true galazzo from outside the area left-footed and that was after uh, some consultation with her forward mates where she was pressing and uh, they have such a great relationship up top her and lauren rice emily borgman and also mcneese another reserve forward and they just chatted with her calmed her down and uh, it worked had a good weekend player of the week offensive player of the week Right there, Jen Klein, the head coach of Michigan. Here is Rhodes. She'll give it right away. Michigan staying with it. Extra effort. Wisconsin will just knock it out of bounds as Grace Douglas will knock it out of bounds. But Michigan, just those little effort plays making a difference. And it's Hernandez. What she does off the ball, her teammates are finding her early. She's running the channels. Sometimes she's coming back into the midfield. Uh, she's a top player in this league. That'll go off of the foot of Yeka, the redshirt junior. There's a tactical awareness there, Nikki Hernandez, which puts her a, a cut above. And it's the relationship that she has with her teammates the ones on the ball to continue to learn and understand her movements. How about Coach Wilkins? Right on point, right? Didn't try to say they were better than they were. Said Bloomer saving the day. Said since the goal from Michigan, they totally outplayed us. We've got to change that. And she also said, I heard it, she needs leaders, right? And this is a big moment now for a leader to step up right here. Among the players you would choose from that department, Victoria Pickett, due to her talent, but that doesn't always classify you as a classic leader. Is it Grace Douglas, who's become a general at the back in this her junior year? Is it Lauren Rice or Cammie Murtha, who played uh, full-time last year? 
and are the engines of the team. We'll see how it develops. Better here from Wisconsin to start the second half. Ty will push it wide. Bigoski. Bigoski cannot deliver a decent service. It will go out of bounds. And boy, we came in pumped up to see Hillary Beal. And early on, she kind of had that sort of strange opportunity where she stumbled a little bit, knocked it along the inline, but she's not been challenged a ton. Not at all. And that might help with uh, her comfort level, getting her uh, first appearance in a long time since suffering the meniscus injury in the U-20 camp. That was in the summer. And she hasn't competed since. I guess we're still in the summer, but July. <laughs> yeah, as hot as it's been, it feels like the longest summer ever, doesn't it? Four minutes in here in the second half. Alongside Glenn Crooks, I'm Dean Linky. Delighted to be with you. Keep it here on Big Ten Network. If you love Big Ten women's soccer, big time college soccer, Northwestern and Penn State will follow this one. Stratagak is just plugging a hole. You see the thing Nikki Hernandez does defensively as the, the target player, the number nine, is she just guides the center backs to one side or the other. Then the winger comes in and pinches a little bit, and a Stratagakis or an Aaliyah Martin needs to plug the hole. And that's why the ball's deep in the Wisconsin end, even though they're in possession. Rhodes will let it bounce out of bounds. It'll stay with Wisconsin. There is Danny Rhodes. Coach Crooks, those second balls are so important. As you know, whether it's on long goal kicks or long throw-ins, whoever wins that second ball can start their attack. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's about being alert, tuned into the game, recognizing where the ball's going to go based on the service. And then it's recovery sometimes in the midfield. Who can get to the spot first? Well, look at Hernandez check back. Very professional front runner for Michigan in combination with Riley Martin. Stratagakis has been all over the pitch. They drop it back to Yucca. Janice Joyner push it forward. Hernandez leads the Big Ten in points and probably should have had some more if not for number 24, Jordan Bloomer in goal for Wisconsin. She might be that leader. She's a long ways away, right, from where they score goals, but some of your best leaders are obviously goalkeepers. No question. Claire Shea a moment ago, too, against uh, Nikki Hernandez. Red Hernandez first touch won the ball and that got Wisconsin into the Michigan end. As we see Alex Alexis Ty. Into the 18. You hear the entire Michigan bench screaming away. Oh, what a move. Hernandez is tricky. She's got some open space. She'll drop it into that space. Martin trying to make it 2 nothing. And what a save again. The right paw right there of Bloomer. Go, go. That looked like it was targeted. Side panel, back post. There's Riley. Just a touch, a fingertip save by Bloomer. That's her third tremendous save of the match to keep Wisconsin in this one. Bloomer came into this game with 25 saves and a .5 goals against average. She had been sitting watching the acrobatic Caitlin Clem, and now it's her chance, and she is delivering. She may have to make another save right here. 
And perhaps the post made the save. I think that may have hit some woodwork for the Michigan Wolverines. Shot from distance, eight shots for Michigan. right there. Emma Cooper. Brooke Seely had that opportunity. Let's see if it did hit the post. Boom. Sure did. That's a save, man. It is a save. Parrying it off the post bloomer. So <laughs> make that number four in the uh, big time department. Seely perhaps crossing bloomer up from that position, you know, oftentimes would uh, expect a, a back post delivery or shot and very well taken. Cleanly struck. Because of Jordan Bloomer, Wisconsin hanging around. Rice, corner kick, Wisconsin. And Glenn, I love your words because here's the deal. Bloomer does just have four saves, but you said it best. A lot of times you get an easy save, right? A little roller. Those are all four <laughs> phenomenal athletic saves. I don't, she hasn't had an easy one, I don't think. No, she's got four saves. You said it. Here's a corner kick. Driven in. We're watching uh, Michigan set up zonally off these corners, but they're silly who uh, is the one that just uh, rocketed off of Bloomer in the post. This is trouble. Dancing with it, pick it, and find an opportunity to take a shot. No problem this time here for Hillary Beal. Beal, who was part of the 2016 CONCACAF Championships as well, part of the U-17 World Cup. Big time credentials. The other thing I learned from Ian Joyce, her youth national team goalkeeper coach, is what a great teammate she is. The number three keeper for the U-20s was also in the same position with the U-17s, but that never stalled her progress or how she operated as a teammate. And just like getting minutes on the collegiate level, she can reach it with uh, getting that experience on the international level, getting some caps. And uh, there's some great competition on the youth level. Some very good keepers on the way. Riley Martin, the goal scorer, coming back in support, switching the point of attack for the Michigan Wolverines on a dime. She drops it over to Hankinson. As Hankinson was ready for it. Getting just a piece of it there was Jada Dane. Dane scored the first goal last year in Madison. It was a big moment for her. Riley Martin this time on the left side. She's got that great left foot. Send it across, and no problem for Beal. But there's Nikki Hernandez. If you're curious as to why she acquires so many assists, that ball in between the defenders to lead Riley with a perfectly weighted ball is one of the reasons. 
There's a stand corrected, no problem for Bloomer, who's been one of the stars of the game. Ricky Hernandez, you see those five assists. Tied for second in the Big Ten. And Hernandez has been denied by Bloomer. Rhodes scored against Northwestern, scored against Illinois, looking for the whistle. As long as it stays one nothing, all you need is just a little bit of space for a player like Danny Rhodes. We talked about those game winners last year against big time competition, Lauren Rice. She's got 10 points on the season. And there she is. She doesn't need a whole lot of room, Glenn, to make it 1-1. No, and, it, and in addition to her ability to score, she's also better with her back to the goal this year. That's one thing that Paula Wilkins identified, which is uh, better for the setup game and the build-up game and to get numbers into the attack and play the wingers through. And uh, the issue, though, in this game now is that Michigan... In recovery, they're dropping many numbers behind the ball, and you heard uh, Paula Wilkins describe that as well as one of their uh, the portions of their halftime chat was how to break down a compact defense as you get closer to goal because that's what they're encountering with Michigan. Rhodes takes down two players here. There's one. Got her. Well. Just that uh, right hand went up and to the face, inadvertent. You use your arms to try to keep players off and, and hold on to the ball. Even if inadvertent, sometimes that'll uh, be cause for a card. Didn't see one emerge. Rhodes on that 50-50 ball, one at first, then Rice played it back to her. Rhodes, watch the spacing now for Wisconsin. Multiple players filling some lanes. She'll drop it far right over it for Wisconsin set in there the Goski number 30 that final pass though goes wanting Glenn well Bogalski she's used to being a, a big part of the attack and she's rarely got in with service that's possibly her first quality ball into the area Riley Martin running downhill Couple white jerseys bumping her. She'll fall down at the 18. Referee's been pretty consistent, though, on those kind of plays. Hanging on to the whistle. Nine shots for Michigan, three for Wisconsin. And the biggest shot coming from Riley Martin. First half, the only goal of the game. <laughs> Leah Martin may have hurt herself. She grabbed her hamstring after getting ready to settle into a shot. Well, she had a lot of time in the ball, and she was trying to decipher exactly what she wanted to do. Let's see, uh, you can see she's favoring it. Her best option there might have been to just to pivot and keep it. Wisconsin into the 18, just needs one opportunity. Cleared out of there by Joyner. Janice Joyner, a freshman from Medina, Ohio. Stratagakis with a giveaway in the center of the park, and that led to that counter and opportunity. But once again, Janice Joyner, she's had a big game. Central defender for Michigan, the number 24. There's Hillary Beal. Two saves for Beal. There's Janice. Joiner, part of the future here. That was Wisconsin's first shot this half. And keep in mind, they only had one in the last 40 minutes leading up to that, as Michigan has pretty much controlled the run of play. I think even Paula Wilkins was saying that at halftime, Glenn. Yeah, and uh, Wisconsin has drawn corner kicks. They've been able to get the ball wide, but not across. So well, you can uh, look at that a couple of ways. They haven't done much with the corner kicks as well. Leah Martin continues to stay in there. Wisconsin does have the advantage in corners, and now Wisconsin's going to have a dangerous free kick. All you need is one dangerous free kick. Jordan Bloomer has kept Wisconsin in the game, and now Michigan's going to have to get strong defensively. It'll be Rice over the ball. 
Four goals and two assists on the season for Lauren Rice, the sophomore from Noblesville, Indiana. I wonder if Douglas will move forward. Driven in! Right in front, Beal was there, so close. Almost looked like it went in, and as we said, Grace Douglas was sitting there in front of her. A little smile there from Beal. Douglas on the keeper, and you see Beal did well to react. And here's a really good look at it. On that near post, Emma Cooper kind of just lifted her leg, and she's really got to power that one out. You don't, you don't want to accidentally redirect the ball. And I don't want to say that Michigan dodged a bullet, but Beal did well there. And you know, the Big Ten has uh, goal line technology this year. Michigan up one nothing. Thanks to this player right here, Riley Martin, she'll have it down near the end line. She serves a good ball with her left foot. Nobody home that time though. Thought maybe she'd try to get some air under it, couldn't do it. Wisconsin going the other way. Starting to show the urgency of a 17th ranked team down one nothing on the road. Rice will try to find Rhodes in front. Put it out of there by Joyner. Bigoski will get a chance to send it back in. This time far post. Too deep and too long there for Fabry. The Michigan back line a bit all over the place in that sequence. Wisconsin possession, but still able to clear. You notice at the back four, the fullbacks, they didn't really get in that time for Michigan as they were moving forward. They were kind of holding back, but then Siri Yeka got caught in no man's land, and that's when the ball was played wide to Lauren Rice for the initial service for Wisconsin. Pick it. Always looking to pass. Here's a good one. And Rhodes. Perfect opportunity, really did have that far post open, but could not get it on frame. How about that pass from Pickett? It's between defenders, and it's the weight of it. Look at that, into space. That's a great midfielder. You're looking space, space, space. So oftentimes, those kind of passes are played into the defender because the player on the ball doesn't see the space first. Pickett did, Rhodes couldn't convert. Of that 2016 FIFA U-20 World Cup, Victoria Pickett. She'll be playing with Christine Sinclair. Come on, Count on that. Badgers have looked good here the last five minutes. One bounce. Gobbled up there by Hillary Beal, the sophomore from Laguna Beach. California. What did Paula Beal say? I mean, Paula Wilkins say about Hillary Beal? She can really hit it, and that's a good thing. That's a punch she didn't really hit that well, and it still went about three quarters of the field. Oh, check that. Yeah, Jennifer Klein. Forgive me. One-on-one -on -one defending. And out of there by Janice Joyner. The freshman has been up to the challenge. Long ball. Knocked out of there just in time is Abby Castro. The senior for the Wolverines. One of those three front runners up top for new head coach Jennifer Klein. I like the style of soccer she plays. I can tell you that this 4-3-3 is exciting. There's a lot of movement, good spacing, nice diagonal balls, and we're seeing it right here. Into the 18, little turn. Nice little spin there by Stratagakis. And corner kick, look at that extra effort there. Staying with it, Meredith Hawkinson. 
Claire Shea initially defending Stratagakis. That's why it was popped well into the air. But Hawkinson drawing the corner. That could be big for Michigan as they try to get that second goal. Hawkinson, a freshman from Maple Grove, Minnesota. Great look here from behind the goal just for the setup. Now the corner kick for Michigan. Hawkinson, who earned the corner kick. A little swing and a miss. Set back in a little bit of trouble. The challenge there again, once again, ready for anything and everything, Jordan Bloomer. Well, now it's Cal Gagno with that service, running hard onto the keeper, Sammy Atterbury. And Bloomer up to the task as she has been throughout the night. By the way, Atterbury is another freshman for Jennifer Klein, who's not been afraid with the lead or without a lead to play multiple players. Trying to make it 2 nothing. Can they get one by Bloomer? It'll fall! There it is! You knew it was coming. Nobody can stop that one. And Ashley Calcagno makes it 2 nothing. Michigan. Well, there she is, Cal Gagno. Watch this finish. So the ball, again, not cleared successfully enough. And Bloomer's made a lot of saves tonight. No one's getting that. Upper left corner, off the half volley. A kid who was a walk-on in 2015. She came to Michigan for academic reasons, made the team. Pretty big goal there. It's big enough to be a BTN standout presented by Auto Owners Insurance. And Michigan with a little bit of insurance, right? The first goal this season for Calcagno and Michigan up two to nothing. First career goal for the walk-on. Simply amazing. You talk about players buying in with a new coach, players that have been there, the entire regime of Greg Ryan. These young ladies are doing it. Jennifer Klein, she's got that fire and that passion. Just wait till she gets some of her players mixed in here as well. Yeah, but it's a, a big part of getting this current unit together and connected. It's a huge goal when you consider the number of outstanding chances. Two for Nikki Hernandez. Riley Martin, the goal scorer, had a second one denied. Remember how the corner kick was drawn. And then this is the second ball off the corner, unmarked top of the box. And when you review that on the Wisconsin side, you'll have to look and see why there was absolutely no pressure at the top of the box for the shooter. But Cal Gagno, technically, very proficient off the half volley to strike that and keep it on frame. Yeah, here's a player that obviously caught the eye of Jen Klein. I mean, she played in two games in 2015, three and 16. None last year. And she's been starting now for Coach Klein. And Jen Klein managing this game successfully. Cal Gagno right there. She didn't start the second half. She started the game, but at the beginning of the second half was given a little bit more of a breather. And she comes in maybe a bit fresher. What a great strike. And I think she's still trying to get past the fact that she got that first career goal and now has to lock it down as the holding midfielder. Her defensive responsibilities are really important to tr try to deny the ball into both Rice and Rhodes. I mean, she's an academic all Big Ten player. Did not play in a single game last year. The coach leaves. She could have said, you know what? Pretty smart, getting a good degree here. But no, she comes back. And now with her first career goal as Michigan on top two to nothing. And she's playing a position in the 4-3-3 with two attacking midfielders. She's the lone six, the defensive midfielder, the holding midfielder. 
And that's an incredible responsibility. That position in a 4-3-3 is very much the quarterback. You have to do it on both sides of the ball. You have to spray the ball right and left. And oftentimes that player is not that close to the goal to get an opportunity, but she's in there on the set piece. She gets her chance and may have sealed it for Michigan. But I don't want to say that because we saw Indiana come back against Michigan last Thursday. They were trailing 2 nothing. They scored two goals in three minutes in the last portion of the game. I, I, you think that's running through Jen Klein's head a bit? Absolutely. You know it is. But uh, the other thing that's running through her head is the way they bounce back and beat Purdue at Purdue. Coming into this one, it would have been a different story. I think it may have been a woe is me. In the meantime, they're looking for that third goal. Stratagakis was looming. Here come the Badgers. Get one before that 10 minute mark and then yeah, Michigan does start thinking about Indiana. Hawkinson knocks it off of Wisconsin. That was Raleigh Lofman substitute who uh, played that ball into Stratagakis. We saw Stratagakis trying to nick one in front of the keeper. And once again, Bloomer did very well. So here comes that re-entry. Jennifer Klein. Running players in and out here in the second half, trying to keep her players fresh. This could suit Hernandez well, right? Two nothings gonna open up. If they drop one long, Hernandez could be off to the races. Seal it, seal it. Don't stop. Yeah, she's proven to be able to run the channels against either Claire Shea or Grace Douglas on the left or the right. Hernandez, the story with her, a midfielder last year in the spring. Jen Klein joins the club, replacing Greg Ryan. Needs a forward, needs a forward in a spring match. Uh, they were a little light in that area. Pushes Nikki Hernandez up top, and that's where she's been ever since. Came into camp this year as a striker. Leads the Big Ten in points, so I would say that move has worked out. She's been dangerous tonight. Jordan Bloomer in goal for Wisconsin's done all she can to try to keep her team in this, but the Michigan attack has been exquisite here. Multiple layers. Those three front runners, the midfield play, the Martin sisters, Stratagakis. And then the freshman off the bench too, Glenn. So many phenomenal freshmen in the Big Ten every year, but boy, this year, the freshman class, I mean, Purdue starts eight freshmen for starters, right? And you know that Penn State and Ohio State had to reload. Penn State and Northwestern, by the way, coming up after this one, 20 and 21. Well, what I used to say at Rutgers to those that were incoming and were freshmen, you're freshmen in the classroom and you're a soccer player on the field. Oftentimes, it doesn't matter. It's about quality, maturity, and we find that these players, uh, some of these young players are, uh, and I'm so impressed how mature they are because obviously beyond the soccer, they have to handle an academic load. Uh, they're in a new environment in their first year, so there's a lot to handle for freshmen. Michigan having a little fun. Midfield back heel for the Wolverines. Over there in front of the Michigan Ultras. Abby Castro just hit that one. Now Sam DeVecchi has come in on the left side at the back for Surrey Yeka for Michigan. One of the things against Indiana up 2-0, Jen Klein did alter her back line at times, perhaps for fitness reasons perhaps to give players an opportunity with a two-goal lead. So we'll see how this plays out. Delvecchi played on the right side of defense. 
in that Indiana match. Bloomer will ping it out of bounds. Michigan leads it two to nothing. Let's take a look at the goals in this one, Glenn Crooks. Well, this first one, I mean, just a tremendous finish just inside the area. Bloomer, we've talked about all the saves she's made. That was unsavable by Riley Martin. Unsavable shot number two. First career goal for Ashley Calgagno. Two nothing Michigan. 13 and change. In this one. Michigan, their last five games, 13 goals. Of course, that includes a couple goals in that heartbreaking loss to Indiana, but they wiped it away. I mean, that's the first thing she said. She said, you know what? We completely flushed that away. We didn't talk about it. We didn't deal with it. We just got ready for Purdue. They did watch film and the, the one thing that is impressive about how they operated there and they I, they were a better team against Purdue they played better soccer is they just looked at their deficiencies in the game what went wrong and how to make it better and that's all you can do you just whether it's during the game something goes wrong you solve it you get together and solve it in between games you have more time you watch film and uh, Certainly one of the things they had to um, identify is how to kill a game. So that's one of the things they reviewed. Uh, it worked against Purdue. They held on to win 1-0. Let's see what happens here in the latter stages. Danny Rhodes will check back in for Paula, Paula Wilkins and the Wisconsin Badgers. Rhodes with goals in back-to-back -back games, part of the reason why she was named the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week. Cut inside there by Bigoski. Ooh, Hernandez. She may have a good point. Over her left shoulder, and that's what she is saying. Claire Shea was... I thought behind her, but the play goes up, and Wisconsin quickly trying to go the other way, taken away by Michigan. How about the turn by Riley Mark near the halfway line? And she played that ball through to Hernandez. It was close. Shea, everybody coming forward now for Coach Wilkins and the Badgers. Plenty of time to score a couple here. So he, there's a perfect case maybe of Michigan needing a little bit more game management, right? They got that free kick. They probably had a chance to sort of take their time, act like they're thinking about things, and they went right to it in their own defensive third. Man, you know about managing the clock during those final 12 minutes is important. Yeah. There's, and that's that's a part of it. Most coaches have a list of things they want to do over the last 10 minutes, goal up, goal down. And that's certainly one of the things is take your time in those situations. Wisconsin, beyond midfield. Stella. More white jerseys cleared out of there by Michigan. Keep it there. Michigan gonna feel the pressure. There's Hernandez again checking back. A good number nine can play with her back to the goal, hold possession, make a decision what to do with your first touch support underneath do you turn in that part of the field as she checked deep uh, that is hernandez checked deep uh into her own end she did the right thing just keep the ball stop. Stop. Together. Stop. you got uh Yeka back into the game dean at left back so she came in for devecki but brooke silly uh, she's gone in for jada dane at the left central position so Adjustments at the back. Now, Day is coming off again. She's still getting her fitness back. Injured earlier in the season. 
They're getting a, a breather. I would imagine it'll be a brief one. Ligoski on the turn, but looks like there's going to be a card. Hernandez will get a card. Meanwhile, Wisconsin down 2 nothing. They still have not had a shot in 20 plus minutes. Hard to get back in the game when you're not able to take shots. That's lockdown defending, but it's a big part of Michigan's success, a little bit late from Hernandez, is how well they recover. Their transition has been fantastic tonight. Bouncing around on the field. No card issued moments ago to number 20 Hernandez. We're looking ahead. Wisconsin will head to East Lansing on Sunday to take on Tom Saxton. The Michigan State Spartans, Cameron Evans, freshman Fina. Three braces on the season as Rice was trying to make it 2-1. Meanwhile, Michigan will welcome Stephanie Golan and the Minnesota Golden Gophers to the University of Michigan Soccer Stadium on Sunday. More soccer after this one. Northwestern and Penn State. Those two teams you feel like you can say pretty much now every year part of the big dance. That's how good those programs are. Eight minutes. Sarah Yeka positioned zonally right at the edge of the six by the front post. Thunderous header out of bounds. Cleared out again by Michigan. Look at Yucca, 16 years old when she put on the full national team jersey of Canada. It's just no problem for Michigan. The Wolverines will take it. Yucca was out briefly and has come back in. And she did look a, a, a little gassed, so Jen Klein giving her a breather. Normally, you don't make too many adjustments at the back, especially with a lead. But still in the first third of the season. Fitness players are not 100% fit as of yet. Vygoski headed down, still in bounds. Hear the encouragement from the Wisconsin bench. Positive the whole way through here. Still a work in progress for Paula Wilkins. A lot of youngsters out there. O'Shea, heavy touch. Michigan. Try to put some final stamps on this one in. You heard me say it, Glenn, there are no easy ones. I mean, you look at the Big Ten a couple games into conference play. There's only two teams in the Big Ten that actually have below 500 records. Maryland 3-4-3, and three, Ohio State at 3-4, and four. everybody else 500 or above, including the Indiana Hoosiers, the only undefeated team in Big Ten play. How great is that for the Big Ten to have the Indiana Hoosiers women's soccer team in the race? It's pretty exciting. It is, and it, it's it's great for their program, and it's almost necessary considering the the level of experience that they have this year. This really is the year for Indiana. Out of bounds again. Last year they lost a half dozen one goal contests. And the way they've opened up the Big Ten season, they've got a one goal game and it was a victory against this Michigan team in the maze and blue. <laughs> Jordan Bloomer, ping it long, but an all important second ball. One by Michigan. Turnover. 
Wisconsin need to score quickly here. I thought she was going to take that ball towards the corner. That's part of killing the, you're inside five minutes. You are, you're in definite kill the game territory right now. Every second you can push off the clock is important. Let's take a look at the recently released RPI as well. And get your thoughts on that, Glenn Crooks. Well, you see that Michigan, for instance, is not in the top 50. So uh, if this uh, result stands, that's going to help their cause. And that's what happens when you're playing Big Ten Conference matches. You see a number of teams within the top 35. If you're 40, 41, 40, if, from the mid 40s and higher, you're generally in good at-large bid territory. Wisconsin can make it 2-1 here. Saved by Beal. An excellent ball in the space there. The shot from Mirtha. Penn State and Northwestern coming up after this one. Wisconsin trying to make a game of it. Knocked out of bounds to be a corner kick Badgers. Borgman putting in a good shift. Reserve this second half. And then Mirtha, this is her first release of a shot. That's a great outside in run. Good delivery. Corner kick driven in. Beal hesitated for a moment. Cleared out by Michigan. Michigan defended that well. Beal kind of palmed it instead of double fist punching it. But her teammates did well. That was Jordan Bloomer who sent that ball to Rhodes to earn the corner kick. And if I'm Jordan Bloomer, she should come forward and try to challenge Hillary Beal in her first start since October 6th. Five saves tonight. Oh my, that one, Beal hesitated for just a moment. It went far post, but Badger's not able to get a piece of it. Hillary Beal took one step towards the server after it was delivered. That's a complete misjudgment on her part. And Danny Rhodes, the leading scorer for Wisconsin from a season ago, who's just getting back into her form. Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week. She missed one right at the she back post. She needs to score right there, Coach. Right? I mean, it was right there. Any part of her body other than her hands or arms. Just that kind of game, though, right? Stratagakis. We were high on her coming into this game, the sophomore, and you can tell by the jersey right there, can totally drench there, Stratagakis. I like the small midfielders, and when you're down there, sometimes you will get the elbows. You can't <laughs> help it. I felt some of that you, pain over the years. I only gave you a couple elbows tonight, but <laughs> <laughs> more coming tomorrow night. Bloomer done everything but score a goal for the Badgers. All right, Glenn, big picture, new coach here for Michigan. Jennifer Klein won a national championship with associate head coach for the University of Southern Cal. And what do you think of the job she's done so far? Six and four now. It's good, and it's just not about managing the game, but how she's managed her team. Uh, the difficult loss last Thursday night. There's Jen probably saying, please kill this, kill this game with a minute left. But to, to gather her team and just, I think in a very pragmatic way, look at the errors and what caused the difficulties on Thursday when you were up 2 nothing with under five minutes to play and lose 3-2. That could be, and under a new coach, you know, there could be some raised eyebrows. Are we doing it the right way? You know, that's, players are like that. But she's uh, managed to keep it all together after that opener. And looks like uh, two and one is on the horizon here. Yeah, this will be a big win. Meanwhile, if you're Paula Wilkins, keep in mind Sammy Kleedke, the sophomore defender, still out with an injury. She'll be big 
to come back in the lineup. By the way, Sammy Cleekley's brother Noah plays for the Michigan men's soccer team. But what's Paula Wilkins going to say to her team after this one? Well, Paula's good that way. And I think the, the thing I would always say, and you, post game, you don't say too much because you really want to look at things and see why Michigan had so much space in this match. Bloomer with the service. Riley Martin, by the way, issued a yellow card. Essentially, Wisconsin did not execute their game plan, which was to press, not allow Michigan to change the point, win the ball back in Michigan's end, and maneuver from there. That didn't happen today. Part of it was Michigan's ball movement, but also the recognition of playing over the midfield into the forward line where Nikki Hernandez made a lot of smart runs, as did uh, Riley Martin. Those two together, they're pretty lethal up top for Michigan. Michigan undefeated in their last eight games at home against Wisconsin, now 3-0-5, a 2-0 winner for the Michigan Wolverines. A great time here in Ann Arbor. Coming up next, more women's soccer as Northwestern hosts Penn State. For Glenn Crooks, Billy Proctor, and our entire BTN crew, I'm Dean Linke saying so long from Ann Arbor where the Michigan Wolverines take care of business. Two-nothing winners over Wisconsin.